Sniffledorf is throwing a tea party? I don't own teacups, but this'll do. I figured he needs some furniture his own size to host his party. It's not a huge party. I only found two chairs at the thrift store, so it's just gonna be him and one other guest I managed to dig up. Say hi to Sprinkles. Hey, everybody. It's been a long, long time since I've done a thrift store makeover. I think I did one like over half a year ago, but I figured with spooky season upon us, now's a great time to try again. Mama didn't raise no quitter. That's my boy. I ran into this trio at the Goodwill. It's really nice furniture. It's made of wood. Sturdy stuff. It's a cute size. Very tiny. Maybe even running a bit small for Sniffledorf, if I'm being honest. But he loves it. Tell them you love it. I've had it sitting in the hallway, and I've caught him lounging on it and peeking over from his chair a couple times. <gasps> it looks like doll furniture. It's even adorned with some hearts gouged out of the wood. Cute, cute. That's a bit of a roadblock, but I'm not going to even try to fill those in. Uh-uh. I don't want to ruin the whole thing. It has this plain, rustic, woodsy kind of look, which is nice. Very nice. It's just not my aesthetic, so I'll be painting it to make it look more evil. It is doll furniture, but not like teeny tiny Barbie doll or something. More like a life-size baby doll. I'm not too familiar with dolls, but yeah. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the furniture is a little too big to fit into frame, so I'm going to have to adjust some things. I zoomed out as much as I could, got rid of my gorgeous orange poster board background, orange, and replaced it orange, with an ugly orange tablecloth. Orange, 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 orange. Personally, I hate it, but Sniffledorf really seems to love it. He wouldn't stop attacking it, so at least someone likes it. It's still not fitting into frame perfectly, but it's a little better. I think I can make it work. I'm gonna start off by peeling off all the little price stickers. They actually peeled off pretty easily. I just used some acetone to help scrub them off. Ew. This one doesn't have a sticker, I guess. That's nice. No, you've been a good friend. Normally, this would be the point to pull out the gesso. Except for I don't have gesso, so I just tried making do with white paint. It's multi-surface paint from Folk Art. I just thought it would work best on any surface, so I got it. I'm pretty sure any acrylic paint would work on wood, though. I did later on go grab some gesso. I don't always gesso everything. The paint can soak down into the wood, so it's just best to layer a bit of gesso on to prime and seal the wood before painting. I wanted Sniffledorf's furniture to last a long time, so I made sure to seal it with gesso in case that makes a difference. They weren't completely white yet, took a few layers of paint. After gessoing it, I did switch back to white paint and layered that on a couple more times. I wanted the whole thing to be a bright, 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 bright white. It took a little longer than expected. Took literally a whole day just to paint these three white with gesso and white paint and everything. It's kind of like three thrift store makeovers in one, but they're a set, they, they go, go together. together. So I wanted to do them all in one video. I did have to maneuver a bit to get into all the little crevices. <laughs> the hearts were annoying, but the most difficult part was reaching the little cutout things under the table. They were nearly impossible. Nearly. But you know Rarbabe wasn't gonna give up that easily. There were also little screw holes that I tried making incognito with white paint. I didn't want to fill them in with epoxy or anything. I just wanted to make them blend in with the rest of the table. There were also little, not entirely sure what they are, maybe like nail holes from a nail gun. <laughs> I tried my best to cover those up as well. I did gesso the bottom of the chairs, but I didn't completely paint them white. I figured I'm painting them black anyways, so I'll save myself some work and some time. I've spent a lot of time on these already. It was honestly looking really nice with the white paint. Already looks a bit more modern. They even look nice on my lovely patio. Oh yeah. Fits well with my manicured lawn and, um parking lot. I was just spraying them down with some Mr. Super Clear to seal in all of that nice white paint. I let that sit out there for a bit to dry and then brought them in. Yes, Sniffledorf wow. wasn't really having That's much of it though. Wow, I love this chair. I tried bribing him with mice and Tweety Birds to give it a chance. 
but he wasn't too interested in it at this point. Wasn't fitting his vibe. Not spooky enough for his taste quite yet. One of the chairs had a little gap on its side. It's tiny, not super annoying, but I did try smacking it into place. It didn't work, but whatever. I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Here's where things got a little more intense. I pulled out a measuring tape so you know things are getting serious. Oh, the horror. I never pull out the measuring tape. I wanted things to be as precise as possible. Only the best for Sniffledorf. I'm taping the chair down every other inch, creating a striped pattern. I wanted the stripes to be as clean as possible, hence all the measuring involved. That's what we're doing today on the dark side, stripes. <laughs> I usually do cartoony characters and such, but I wanted to mix things up a little today, shake things up on the dark side, but obviously still go for that creepy cute vibe. This furniture is going to be more like modern spooky. I don't know if that's a thing. I might have just made it up, but bear with me. If you're new here and you live in the modern age, 2021. You should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. I actually really love this tape. I'm not sponsored and I forgot what brand it is. Oh, it's just scotch tape. I've used masking tape and painter's tape before. It always just peels off. I never see the point in using them. This tape, however, did a pretty good job. I read online that if you want clean lines while using painter's tape, you should paint over the painter's tape with whatever color you already have on there first. Apparently going over the tape seals the edges down with paint so that when you go over it with the other color, it doesn't seep under the tape. Basically, I just want nice, crisp, clean lines. That's the goal, at least. It usually never ends up that way, but we'll see. I have high hopes for this. So here's another coat of white paint just to seal the tape in. Lots of white paint used today. So half the stripes are going to be white and the other half are going to be black. I feel like there's not a whole lot of spooky or creepy patterns out there, but one that is prevalent is stripes. I don't know at what point stripes became so spooky. Maybe it started with Beetlejuice, but I can't say for sure. This furniture is going to be Beetlejuice themed. In fact, I will even add a pop of green later on. Things are looking like a hot mess right now. Sniffledorf hates it. In fact, he's hiding from it in his tunnel. <laughs> the chair can't catch him in there. Though Sprinkles, on the other hand, really seems like he's enjoying it. Hey, everybody. I bet he'd even sit there all night if I let him. And now the moment of truth. Wow. It worked. It actually worked. I want this to be satisfying. The stripes came out pretty clean. They're not perfect, but they're pretty close to being perfect. Close enough for me, at least. I'll be doing touch-ups later at the end. The furniture is going to have, like, black accents and a black trim just to break up the stripes a bit. The bottom of the table is going to be all black. Again, the crevices were being difficult, but I just shoved it in there. Black does cover a lot easier than white, so it wasn't too bad. I taped up the edges of the chair and then worked on the hearts a bit. I knew those hearts would be annoying. It took some time taping them up. You can tell I was really focusing because my head keeps popping into frame and blocking the camera's view, so you can't see anything. Not that there's much to see. I'm just taping up those infuriating hearts. Also, the chair has funky wiggly arms. They look really cool, but they're a pain to tape up. A lot of this video is just me struggling with tape, but to get the look I'm going for, it's worth it. I went in with black over all the edges and trim. Now you can really see it starting to come together. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I think I was dancing with joy. 
I'm just really happy about how it's looking. This honestly might just be one of my favorite things I've ever made. I could have left the hearts white, but I thought maybe if I painted them black, they would be a little less noticeable. Maybe blend in with the chair if I'm lucky. Jokes aside, they don't really bother me too much. I think it's kind of funny to have them on there. Plus, it is for Sniffledorf, and he's my baby, so it works. When I took the tape off, you can see things weren't as perfect this time around. It's gonna take some touch-ups. I'll fix that whole mess up later. The bottoms of the chair are just going to be all black, so I taped those up and started painting them. Turns out I forgot to tape this side. Got a little paint outside the lines. Luckily, I noticed in time to stop and tape it up and then continue painting it black. I went around doing some touch-ups, just trying to clean up a bit of that mess. The green paint I had on hand seemed a little too dark. I wanted like a light lime green, so I mixed a couple colors together until I was happy with it. I originally intended on painting green drips going down the back of the chair. After seeing the stripes and how good they looked, I didn't want to ruin them, so instead I settled for painting the butt of the chair green. I thought it would add a nice pop of color to it and make it look a little more spooky and a little less like Sephora. I couldn't get a perfectly straight line with the seat corner, so I had to go in with a smaller brush and just kind of push some more green paint into the edges. The white and black paint I used were a bit shiny. They have a bit of gloss to them. The green, however, is pretty matte. I felt it didn't mesh well. I wanted it all to tie together and look cohesive. I used glossy Mr. Super Clear on the whole furniture set to seal everything in and give everything a nice glossy finish. So here's the whole set together, finally ready for Sniffledorf's tea party. Except wait, where's the tea? I picked this little tea set up at the dollar store. I thought about spray painting it black, but I think it's a nice contrast to the spooky vibes. Plus it matches Sprinkles' tutu. I picked up the tutu at a Goodwill. I ran into an elephant wearing a tutu and I just had to have it. The tutu, not the elephant. That thing was hideous. The cashier was nice enough to let me just have the tutu. He didn't even charge me. A free tutu. It was a good day on the dark side. But that didn't last. Turns out Sniffledorf's not a fan of tea. Sprinkles also didn't want to partake. He didn't even want to look at his tea. Tough crowd. This is definitely my favorite thrift store makeover I've done so far, and I think I'd like to make even more modern spooky stuff in the future. I like tea. Maybe I'll throw my own tea party. Click on the top right or bottom left to have tea and biscuits with me. Pinkies up!